I've heard of a story, and it's a true story. It's a story of a couple, a uh, husband and wife. Um, uh, later in their years, they're, they're around 60 years old, um, mid-60s or uh, early 60s. But they um, had some tragedy that happened in their lives. Um, in fact, uh, it started with the, the, the lady's father. And, and she um, loved her parents. Parents, believers in Christ, uh, father passed away. And uh, it, was, it was devastating for her. And not too long after that, the, the mother began to slip into some type of dementia, but it was a different type uh, from my understanding. It was, uh, it was one that brings on psychosis. And it was it's devastating for her. And so she had to end up putting her in a place. And that was devastating. Mother was, uh, was a frail woman and small petite, and, and she would overturn tables and stuff because of what's been transpiring with her. So her, the daughter, the, the wife of the, of the husband, it, it, it is, is devastated because not only she just lost her father, she's losing her mother. And then on top of that, uh, uh, this, the, the, the husband's dad, he died. He was diagnosed with cancer, and then it began to just take him immediately, and it took him. And um, his, he doesn't know if his dad was a believer or not because he dealt with alcoholism, and it was some other things that were going on there, and that's devastating, not knowing that your father is going to heaven. So they dealt with a lot of loss, a lot of grieving within a short span of time. And, and soon as they thought that they were getting over all the loss, life is about to happen. Their daughter. Now, these, the husband and wife are believers. They love the Lord. But their daughter is now with child. And their daughter is about to give birth to their grandbaby. And so the lady, the, the, the daughter goes in and has an a, a ultrasound and, and they see that the baby is not breathing. And so they take the uh, daughter and, 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 and whatnot, and, and, and they begin to uh, run tests, do some other things, and, and find out the baby is dead. And so now this daughter has to deliver this baby, her dead baby. Death, life. These, this couple experienced Death, And when they thought life was coming about, now they're dealing with death again. It's hard. It is hard. And, 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 you know, and it was said that they would hold their baby just thinking that the baby is getting ready to move. And they're asking God, why? 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 Why so much death? Why so much pain? Why so much suffering? Why are we going through? through this, uh, uh, this terrible thing, these things that we have gone through. What on earth? What are we? What, God, we serve you faithfully. We serve you faithfully. And, and, and this is what is happening to us. And, and, you know, and why it seems like bad things always happen to good people. Until we realize that there is none good. So bad things happen to bad people. Because in all retrospect, we are all sinners. There's none, the scripture says there's no one good. The only one that was good was who? Jesus. But why am I going through this? Why am I experiencing this, this, this pain? T today we start a new series in the book of Habakkuk. Diving into the difficult topic of how we can trust God when he seems silent and distant. You know, see, we have questions, objections even, that we face today. Where is God in the midst of injustice? When, 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 just, when will justice and, uh, ever be achieved? How can I still trust God when what I believe in my heart doesn't match my, what, what, what my eyes see? Are y'all still with me? 
Why, why does evil exist? How can a loving God, a, a God who is all-powerful and all-wise, tolerate evil and suffering? How? Why doesn't God do something? Why doesn't he do something about the wickedness and the suffering that is in this world? You see, these questions have puzzled the human heart since the beginning of time. And these questions are real and they are raw. And they, they arise because the world is not as it should be. You see, we, we live in a world that is sinful and corrupt. We, so, so hundreds and, and thousands of, of books have been written on this very subject, this very topic to help people understand these questions. And so we turn to these, these books for explanations on a very heavy subject. But the one thing people fail to do is to turn to God's word for help, which is the one place that provides the answers you are searching for. So Habakkuk, Habakkuk, one of the minor prophets. In fact, his name literally means uh, he that embraces or, or, or has the idea of a wrestler. You know, in wrestling, one person is trying to exert their will on someone or, or something else. Habakkuk. So thousands of years ago, this is precisely what Habakkuk did. He confronted the very same issues and, and was deeply plagued by them. But the difference that lies in between Habakkuk and, and the people of our day is that Habakkuk turned to the Lord for answers, not the world. So if you're physically able to do so, let us stand and as we read God's holy word. Habakkuk chapter 1. Habakkuk chapter 1. And it reads as this says, the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And you will not hear or cry to you violence and you will not save. Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround, it, uh, surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. Verse 5 says, look among the nations and see wonder and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. For Behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans or the Babylonians, that's the same, that bitter and hasty nation who marched through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings, not their own. They are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Verse 8 says, their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They, come, they all come for violence, all their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings, they scoff, and at rulers, they laugh. They laugh at every fortress, for they pile up earth and take it. Then they sweep by like, uh, sweep by like the wind and go on, guilty men whose own uh, who, whose own might is their God. And verse 12 says, Are you not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die. O Lord, you have ordained them as a judgment, and you, O Rock, have established them for reproof. You who are of purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong? Why do you idly look at uh, traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man more righteous than he? You, you make mankind like the fish of the sea, like crawling things that uh, uh, have no ruler. Verse 15 says, he brings all of them up with a hook. He drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his dragnet, so he rejoices and is glad. 
Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and makes offerings to his dragnet, for by them he lives in luxury and his food is rich. Is he then to keep on impl- uh, emptying his net and mercil- uh, mercilessly uh, killing nations forever? One thing I have learned throughout my time of being a Christ follower is that God, no matter how big the problem is for us, no matter how big the problem is for us, no matter what go- goes on in our lives, he is big enough for our questions and our, our, our objections. He's big enough. In fact, he invites us to bring them to him in dialogue and to trust him with them. Father, we thank you for your word. And we ask right now, Father, that you would touch our hearts and our minds. Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you will encourage us through your word, that you would challenge us through your word, that you would grow us through your word. We love you. And as always, use me as a vessel. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Now, to understand the anxiety behind Habakkuk's uh, uh, pleas, it is helpful to understand the times in which he lived. Now, just before then, uh, the Assyrians took over uh, the, uh, the uh, northern Israel. Now, you got to understand that the, the spiritual atmosphere with northern Israel, uh, it, was, it was bad. I mean, you had that split that happened uh, with Jeroboam and, and, and Rehoboam and all of that. And, and you had Jeroboam, he was leading a, a, a charge there in the north. And, and Jeroboam, uh, Jeroboam was uh, very, very wicked. He is the one that, that said, okay, let's, let's go ahead and get these idols and let's put them at a temple and let's worship these false gods pretty much so. It was, a, it was running rampant there. Now, so in, in Habakkuk's day, Judah in Habakkuk's day was, was a nation in total rebellion. Now, this is after the Assyrians t- uh, has uh, enslaved and taken over uh, the northern part of Israel, uh, north, uh, northern Israel. And so, um, and so in Habakkuk's day uh, uh, was a nation in total rebellion against God. Judah was in total rebellion. The people had utterly forsaken the Lord, rebelling against his holy word. And so idolatry, oppression, and violence, they were widespread there. And as a result, injustice plagued Judean society. Few righteous believers remained, just a few. And these uh, faithful few were often persecuted and they were oppressed uh, by them. And everywhere in in Judah, the the strong were taking advantage of the weak and and the rich and the powerful were exploiting the poor. and, And leaders at every level were abusing the very people they were appointed uh, to protect. Sounds like America. Habakkuk, what he did was he looked at all of the corruption and he wondered how God could allow such evil to uh, to flourish. Why uh, why was God not protecting the righteous people, the righteous and innocent? Why was he not punishing the wicked and, and the guilty? Why? Why? And so Habakkuk, he looked and, at all the corruption, and he raises a question. He raises a question. He doesn't take any time writing a, a, a prologue or introduction. He doesn't, you know, say, I'm Habakkuk and all of this and everything. You know, no, no, he gets right to the point. He says, oh, Lord, how long? How long? Shall I cry for help and you will not hear or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed. Injustice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. You see, apparently Habakkuk had been pleading with God. He's been pleading with God for some time, but received no answer. Have you been there before? And why did God not answer his his prayer and help his people? Why on earth? Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry out or cry? Some of your translations may have cry out. Some of your translations may just say cry for help. And you will not hear. 
See, there is frustration in Habakkuk's voice. You, you see this through the choice of words Habakkuk uses. See, the term cry in, in, in this sentence is shawah. It's the Hebrew word shawah. It simply means to call, to, to cry for help. It is the idea of calling to get the aid of someone. Yeah, I, now, I don't know if you guys remember this commercial, these TV commercials, you know, when someone falls and they say, I've fallen and I can't get up. You know, they need somebody to their aid to come to their aid. Now we got these Apple Watches. And, and, and these Apple Watches now, they, they, they detect when you fall. And they try to, you know, make sure you're okay. Are you okay? Or, you know, and if you don't respond, they call 911 and they call your emergency contact for aid. So this is that shawa here, calling for aid. But then he continues on and he says, or cry to you violence. This is interesting because this is a, he a different Hebrew word. This word cry, he uses here, and it is the word zayach here in Hebrew, which means to, to shriek and to cry out in great distress. It is an urgent cry due to anguish or danger. Now, when I was a little kid, the best way I can just describe this, when I was a little kid, uh, we, we used to live in Atlanta, East Point. And we didn't live here that long, but it was in East Point. And I remember being in an apartment complex. My sister was getting her hair done, and I was in there, and, and it was my uncle's uh, apartment. And, 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 and I was, well, I don't know if it was my cousins or friends or what, I don't know, but I just know I was watching Bugs Bunny. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. You know, Bugs Bunny was, was good. And so I'm watching Bugs Bunny, and my sister's getting her hair done, and my uncle comes in, and I'm, I'm nosy. I just follow my uncle in the back. He goes under, reaches down, and grabs a pistol. And I run to the front, and I'm like, pistol, he got a gun, he got a gun. I ain't say pistol. I'm just like, he got a gun, you know. And I'm, oh, my sister jets out and leaves me in there. She's two years older than me. She could have helped me out. Oh. But she, she left. She, she was outside. And I'm sitting in there, I'm, uh, and he's waving the gun and doing all of this and this commotion going on. That's distress. It's in danger. Zayach. That's what Habakkuk was saying. The nation was in danger because of its rebellion against God. And so Habakkuk prays fervently, Shawa Zayach, wondering why is it taking so long for God to answer? Have you been there before? Oh, Lord, how, how long shall I cry for help and, and you will not hear oh, or cry to you violence and you will not save? You see this word violence. This word violence here, the word for violence here is not your, 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 your typical word for violence, if you will. It, it does not mean uh, like a physical violence or something that happens through, through natural disasters or something of that nature. It is a type of violence that is a violence of sin and extreme wickedness. It, it, to, to get a better picture of this, it, it is the same word that is used uh, and that, was caused, uh, that was the cause of the flood in Genesis 6.11. It says in, in Genesis 6.11, it says, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. So with this, it carries the added meaning here of total corruption. Of total corruption and transgressions uh, uh, of, of God's law. Ezekiel put it this way. The prophet Ezekiel said, her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. Neither have they taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have disregarded uh, my Sabbath so that I am profane among them. Habakkuk is Shawa Zayach shrieking and crying out in distress to Yahweh, asking him, why have he allowed so much wickedness, extreme wickedness and corruption among his people? Why on earth is the wicked prospering and the righteous suffering? This is Habakkuk's plea. There was wickedness. There was injustice, oppression, and de uh, destruction, and strife, and conflict, and pain. Oh, America. 
Listen how one commentator explained it. He said this, he said, Judean society had become utterly corrupt. Other prophets such as Jeremiah, Micah, Joel, and Amos described in more, uh, described in more depth just how depraved Judah had become. The nation was crooked from the top levels of government to the lower, lowest rungs of the, the social ladder. People greedily sought to defraud and cheat one another. Leaders, rulers, and, and the upper classes were especially guilty, even priests and ministers. Rulers were exploiting the, and oppressing the people under them. Leaders were hungry for money and, and abused their power and positions. Priests and ministers cared more about growing rich than about teaching the truth of God's word. The result was unrestrained greed, unfairness, strife, conflict, and violence. Habakkuk witnessed the people's crimes and saw how wicked the people had become. He not only grieved over all the suffering caused by their wickedness, but he also uh, was also confused and frustrated. Why had God allowed things to get this bad? How could God let his people sink this low? Oh, America. So, so what Habakkuk does is he says in, in verse 4, he says, so the law was paralyzed. The law is paralyzed. And injustice goes, bef uh, goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. The law was ineffective. It was being ignored. You know how y'all do when y'all drive down the road and y'all ignore the speed limit? <laughs> the law was ineffective. It was being ignored. Therefore, God's law no longer had any effect on the people's behavior. One scholar put it this way. He said, its strength, meaning the law, its strength and influence had been sapped. The, the people had continued in sin so long that God's word had lost its power for them exploitation of the power, uh, I mean, of the poor and, 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 and powerless, greed, selfishness, lust, power was all over the place. Justice was completely perverted. Oh, Lord, how long shall I cry for help? America, America, America. But now it's God's turn. Don't you love it when it's God's turn? Now we see the answer given. Now, before we get into this, I do want to say this. God is not obligated to give us any answer. He didn't have to give an answer. Because he is God, he's sovereign over all. He is the creator over all. He doesn't answer to us. But he shows grace, and he says this to Habakkuk. Look among the nations, verse 5, it says, Look among the nations and see wonder and, and be astounded. For I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation who marched through and the, the breath of the earth to seize dwellings, not their own, they are dreaded and fearsome. Their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards, more fierce than the e evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on, the, uh, on, uh, proudly on. Their horsemen come from uh, afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. They all come for violence. All their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. At kings they scoff and at rulers they laugh. They laugh at, very, uh, at every fortress for they pile up earth and take it. Verse 11, it says, then they sweep. They sweep by like the wind and go on guilty men whose own might is their God. God told Habakkuk, he said, look among the nations. In other words, Habakkuk, look around you. Look around you. But, but not only look around you, look around you and see wonder and be astounded. Be astounded. 
You see, this, these words, wonder and astounded, are the same Hebrew words here, which means to see horror. Uh, to, to, and be horrified, to freeze with fear, be, become speechless in the face of terror. You see, God had already begun to work. He already begun to work. He is raising up a strong pagan nation, the Chaldeans or the Babylonians, if you will. This nation was a ruthless people. But now they are going to execute justice against Judah. He would use them as his agent of judgment. Listen, listen to how uh, uh, another scholar puts this particular portion. He says, God's explanation. He was raising up a strong and ruthless nation to serve as his great, uh, as his agent of judgment. Babylon would be God's instrument of punishment and correction. His people had become so corrupt, so sinful and rebellious that they were beyond the point of repentance. God had already sent the people many warnings. Many warnings. See, some, some folks, some unbelievers, some people think they, they could get away with anything. I'm being blessed. God is blessing me. No, 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 that's probably not the case. Judgment is coming. He gave the people many warnings, many warnings. Prophet after prophet had cautioned the, the people and, uh, that they must repent or else face God's coming judgment. But the people had mocked, persecuted, and even killed God's prophets. They chose instead to listen to false prophets, corrupt men who preach a deceptive message of blessings in exchange for a livelihood and social acceptance. Consequently, the, the Lord had no choice but to judge his people. He had given them plenty of opportunities to repent. See, look, 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 look how he described the Babylonians here in, in, in verses one, uh, I mean, in, in these following verses here, verses six to 11. He says, they would be ruthless and would conquer the world. They would be ruthless and conquer the world. They would be feared and dreaded people. They would be a law unto themselves, doing whatever they wanted to do. They would attack with an army that was swift, fierce, and devouring. They would attack with an army bent on violence and on taking prisoners. And they would scoff at kings and rulers and their fortress cities, uh, easily capturing them. So Habakkuk is like... How on earth are you going to allow a wicked, pagan, idolatrous nation to punish your people? How? Why? Those pagans are far worse than we are. They're far worse than, than we are. I, you know, I, my sin is not as great as theirs. So why are you going to use them? It's so wicked. Why? God just says, yes, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them. But Habakkuk was devastated, heartbroken even. So what? So what? How? How does this help me? So, so what? Why are we saying this? Have we forgot how wicked Judah was? Listen, God, God will accomplish his purposes regardless. He will accomplish his purposes. Instead of Abaca addressing and speaking out against the unfaithfulness of Judah to the covenant, he questions God's methods and timing. Now, I don't want you to do it that way, God. Do it a different way. In fact, this is the way I want you to do it. I want you to get all the wicked people of Judah and, 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 and the, the Babylonians, though that pagan nation, go ahead and judge them, but leave us righteous folks alone. It is easy for us to question God and even disagree with him, to wonder if he even cares about what's going on in, or, or, if he, or even if he sees our dilemma. Listen, when we find ourselves in this situation, we shouldn't turn away from God in frustration and in anger because we face the pain and the suffering. We shouldn't turn away 
from God in frustration and anger. God can handle our questions. He can handle our questions. He, and he even invites us to wrestle with them. But we must always realize that he is the potter and we are the clay. Jeremiah, I love what God tells Jeremiah. Chapter 18, he says, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, he says, arise and go down to the potter's house and, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was working at his will. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in, in the potter's hand and, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. God can do whatever he wants. He is in control. Even as we bring our questions and our doubts to God, it's equally important that we bring an open heart for his inspection. The psalmist says, search me, oh God, and, and, I, and know my heart. Try me and, and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We need to ask ourselves if we want our will or, if, or, or his will to be done. There are some unbelievers who, who believe that they're doing well just because they, they seem to be prospering. I'm prospering, so, so I'm okay. I'm good because I'm being blessed. God, God must approve of what I'm doing. So some even think that they are getting away with it, but they think they can, they, they're fooling God, but judgment is coming. Judgment is, is, is coming. Will come a day. Judgment is coming. And for those who are believers, God never said that we will be exempt from pain and suffering. He never said that we will be exempt from pain and suffering. God hears you. He hears you. He is doing a work in and through you. Just rest in Him. You know, the couple struggling. See, when, when we face adversity, we can do one or two things. We can run away or we can draw closer. Running away is not going to solve the issue. Drawing closer to God will. You know why? Because he'll give you that peace, even in the midst of it. So that couple, they struggle. One, one more than the other. With their faith. God, why? It was a lot. It was heavy. Sometimes we got to look at it and say, God, why not? What, what, what is going on in me that needs to be corrected? What, is, what are you doing in me right now? What, what is going on in my life? What are you doing in me? Whatever you're doing, I, rest, I, I trust and I rest in you because I know that whatever you're doing, you would do it to completion. John Cage once visited Harvard for the purpose of experiencing an anechoic chamber. You probably ask, what is an anechoic chamber? An anechoic chamber is completely silent. I mean, it's nothing. It's just completely silent. Not, it's without any echoes or anything. It's just dead silence. So Cage was perplexed then to hear two sounds, one very high sound and one very low sound. While he's in this chamber, an engineer explained that the high sound was his nervous system. Interesting. It's his nervous system. And the low sound was his blood flow. See, just as the human ear can never experience complete silence, so we can never experience true silence from God. Our job is to train our ears to listen better or be patient and look around us and see what he is doing. And one of the best ways, one of the great ways we can do that is to get into this. Through pain. Through suffering. 
God is still there. He never left. He will never leave. He is always there. Habakkuk cried, Oh Lord, how long? But I tell you one thing, Habakkuk is in the presence of the Lord, enjoying him and others. How long will we go through what we are going through? Let's change our perspective and say, God, I trust you when I go through.